is the room here. Welcome back to our life. We are here reminiscing our summer moments. Uh, the big shopping trip in the morning. There was this day that mom and ma took me and Elizabeth on a big supply shopping trip. What made that so memorable? They chuckled, but you could hear the curiosity in her voice. I don't know, it just felt like a true summer day. I was I went surfing with Cove later. Cove taught me surfing that day. I stayed out late hanging out with Cove. I still feel like complaining about how that day went. <laughs> Cove taught me some surfing that day. Ooh, lucky! Was he a good teacher? Yeah. Of course he would be. <laughs> Lo the library? We did so much! What the fuck? I went to the library to work on assignments. Hey, I thought we were supposed to be talking about the good parts of summer. Uh, it was pretty interesting work. It did actually really suck. It was fun because I got to hang out with Derek and Cove. I ended up losing the time I had worked on. No, what? Let's not talk about that one. <laughs> uh, it was fun because I got to hang out with Derek and Cove. Well, that's cool. Hanging with the boys must have saved the whole day. I think so too. Uh, Cove's house for dinner. Oh, this is when we told him about the uh, $20. <laughs> One night, Cove's parents invited me over for dinner at their house for the first time. Mr. Holden made Mexican food. I got to name one of Cove's pet fish. I told Cove about his dad offering to pay me to be his friend. It was a really good night. It was a really terrible night. Um, I want to do the, the whole offering. You already had confided to Lee about the money in the past. That was a secret you kept from Lee, too. It was a secret I kept from her, too. That one I'll tell her. Hey, he paid you to be friends with Cove? Sorry for not saying anything. Back when they moved in, I met Mr. Holden first, and he asked me to be Cove's friend. He said he'd give me twenty dollars to do it. I wanted to tell Cove, but it was hard. Oh, totally. That's awkward and dramatic. It really was. It's good that you finally told him about it. Mm, I'm glad it's not a secret anymore. All right, and then oh, the wild ride where I was dramatic about the horror movie. At oh, one time, Cove's mom had me and Cove go with her on this ride all over town. Why'd she do that? Just cuz? Sort of. We got caught in a sun shower and she wanted to help us air try and I kept going from there. Uh, she rolled the windows down. It was super windy. We went into a movie without even knowing where it was or what it was. She bought me everything I wanted at the burger place. We didn't stop until we got to the leaving sign. It was awful. I had a blast. Um, let's mention the movie because that one stuck out to me. I had to leave because it was a horror movie. Oh no, Michiko, was it bad? Were they mad? It was alright. Cove agreed with me and his mom apologized. Yay! Alright, final one. Incredibly hot afternoon. I remember the hottest day this summer. I could barely do anything and had to stay inside the entire afternoon. I learned more about my mom's though. My parents acted really embarrassing the whole time. Cove was so hot at his house. At his house. He thumbed around at mine all day. Cove came over and we made sandwiches together. I played tic-tac-toe with Cove. I think uh, the tic-tac-toe was because he fucking beat did you win? No. Darn, I bet it was so fun though. Uh, what was your big highlight of the summer, Lee? Talking to you is always the best part of my summer. Oh, Lee! Even though it was a phone call, you just you just knew that Lee was winking at you. You laughed, you shook your head. Come on, tell me. Good, I'm glad you picked the right answer. I think I would laugh. Alright, All right, okay. So a high point for me was when I took that trip with my parents to Europe. That was amazing. Yo, what the heck? You only continued to go over your adventures until you were both... You both were yawning to each other over the phone. At that, we d you decided, sorry, not we, you decided it was time to say goodbye for now. You did have school to wake up for in the morning. Bye, Lee. Bye. Night, Michiko. Talk to you later. Does she also go to a different school? I assume so. You left the phone on the side table for now. Looking at the clock on the wall, you saw that there was only about 10 minutes until your mom's would be insisting you had to go to bed so you could be rested and not for school. You stretch your legs out on the couch inside and defeat, watching the minute hand change one minute closer to bedtime. You arranged yourself, feeling restless, and looked out the windows. Startled initially, you spotted a figure on the hills. It was Cove. When was the when the surprise faded, you realized it wasn't it really wasn't that much of a shock at all. It was exactly something Cove would do. You went outside to meet up with him, you ran off to go see him, you left him alone, you smacked the window to get his attention. You opened the window to call out to him. <laughs> hey <laughs> Um no. You ran off to go see him. Sprinting, you reached the front door in record time. You didn't think you'd see Cove again that day. You had to go to him. When you arrived, you noticed how many fireflies were out that night. They drifted along lazily, barely minding your presence as you waded through to reach the top of the hill. Ko turned towards you as you approached, and you noticed right away that Ko looked happy to see you. I hope you would! Sheesh! <laughs> hey! You had a bounce in your step. You weren't sure how long you'd get before your mom's roped you back inside for bed. Hey, what are you doing out here? Nothing. Nothing, really. 
Uh, he shrugged, seemingly unhappy with his own answer. He stared at him, waiting for him to continue. Well, I guess I was feeling kind of weird about stuff, so I'm getting some fresh air before bed. You really should go to sleep and how you feel. I feel good. I hope you feel better. You shrugged. You nodded. Uh... Uh, I know how you feel. I mean, like, I always get super fucking nervous, like, the night before the first day of school. Ugh, that feeling was horrible. It's hard to stay still. Tomorrow's gonna be the start of a new year. At the mention of school, small noise escaped him. Cole let himself fall back onto his butt and then all the way down. So he's laying on his back. He looked up at the sky. You laid down yourself. You sat in the grass. You stood there. You sat on his chest. Yo, what the fuck? Why would you sit on his chest? <laughs> that would hurt, would it not? Can I... Ugh. Here I go again, acting goofy. <laughs> he had made himself a pretty available seat with the way he was laid out. You plop yourself square in the middle of his torso. Michiko! He jolts it up. <laughs> You're not safe when I'm around, <laughs> I was surprised. He jolts it up in surprise though, couldn't get far from you on top of him. He plopped right back. Into the grass. With a huff, he just gave up being shocked. Fine. He snickered in a self-satisfied way. He had, <laughs> he had been lost in thought or was possibly waiting for you to situate yourself. But he started speaking unprompted again. Thanks for telling me about my dad. And the money he offered you to be my friend. Am I still sitting on his chest? Are you able to breathe him? <laughs> I was like homie and fam at the same time. This was probably the last thing you were expecting out of him. Cove seemed to pick up on that and stretch his arm out wide in front of him. I mean... This is where we met, remember? It happened that day. You could recall the sad little boy with the pink cast who you found in this very spot. It felt like a lifetime ago. I kind of have a strange feeling looking at you. Not in a bad way. Just thinking about you and then really seeing you now. It's something. <laughs> well, before I was sitting beside you. Right now I'm sitting on your chest still, I think. It was almost unbelievable how much of an impact you made on your life just by moving in next door. You couldn't even imagine what your days might have looked like and where where you hadn't met him. Cove glanced back at you, waiting for a response, and you had no idea what to say. Then, still without a word from you, Cove shook his head strongly. What? It's you. What? Uh, what? <laughs> huh? <laughs> it's me. I, I mean, yes. He sniggered before answering. He looked thoroughly amused with the reaction. That's what you do all the time. So I'm being you. Wait, what? What do I do? You do all, you do that all the time too? So do you, Cove. You're stunned he noticed enough to take note of it. I don't do it that much. Wait, do what? Like, just talk all sensitive and emotionally? Not being able to argue with his assessment, you accepted it. You felt bashful about his joke? Um... So do you, Cove. <laughs> That's like my instant reaction. Really? Yes, always. Cove couldn't help but grin at that. Honestly, there weren't many people you could think of who could tease you about something like that. I don't know what we were talking about. I'm pretending. <laughs> pretending you smile, you realize there's no denying that you two have been around each other for a long time. Cove broke the quiet before it could fully settle. See you tomorrow. Hey, I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, see you then. With a final wave, Cove headed for home, but you stayed there a few minutes longer. Okay, I assume I like sat on his chest as JK Lol, and then I sat back down in the grass, because he it said he watch me get situated right your mind kept going back to his simple statement see you tomorrow no matter how much was changing around you there were some things in your life that always seemed to remain true the hills felt warm to you that night before you knew it you were getting comfortable under the covers in your room your mind couldn't help but still be buzzing with thoughts about the future you felt excited nervous unsure uh, nervous you know it's also exciting but fucking nervous. Every bit of your gut felt like it was being turned into a pretzel. A new chapter of your life was about to begin, and you were worried that you were you were worried what new changes were waiting for you. Slowly, your eyes grew heavy as you drifted off to sleep, your mind spinning with wishful thoughts. No matter what happened next, you could only hope that you would make the most of it. You were ensnared in a dream when a noise from the outside world jostled you. Your eyes snapped open. Noises happened. You just tried to forget it. You stubbornly kept your eyes pressed closed. Press shut. Sorry. No, we're gonna open our eyes. Every time a weird noise happens, we o we always get curious anyway. So your eyes snapped open. The light clatter continued. Now that you were more alert, you could distinguish it was a tapping sound. Quiet, slow, but persistent. Wait, is it Cove? We literally just saw you. 
Each beat was like being poked. You couldn't ignore it. You lifted your head from the pillow and looked for the source. Not much work was needed to puzzle it out. It was from the window. With that, you knew exactly what it was. And the color of the light filtering into your room, it was too early for anyone to be awake, including the sun. It had barely hauled itself over the horizon, but that didn't stop some people, it seemed. You sat up and then opened the window wide. Cool air not yet warmed by the day. Oh, okay. Is it like... A couple hours into my sleep later, take on your face as it pushed into your room. And just as you'd expected, there was your neighbor crouching on your windowsill. He was fully dressed, though not for school. Wait, what? Oh, Cole, what are you doing? Are you out getting a swim before school? He was wearing a wetsuit and a fawn smile. Oh! Don't! <laughs> oh. He stared back, blinking. Um, so technically, we won't be back to school for a few more hours you really woke me up for this oh you're really a romeo aren't you his voice was delicate yet deliberate each word a careful explanation classes haven't actually started yet so do you want to hit the beach with me one more time this summer <laughs> always here we go again it's way too early cub you're crazy cub you're so cute oh i could do that <laughs> all right i'm going for that I know you guys told me like I could just like scroll up <laughs> and I don't need a save, but I have a save obsession. <laughs> Cove, you're so cute. His smile widened affectionately. He rushed to get changed into something suitable while Cove climbed back down to ground level. Your limbs still half asleep struggled somewhat as you attempted to coordinate them into a swimsuit, but you got there in in the end. He sees me like with my bed head and everything doesn't question it. <sighs> I can only love you more. <laughs> Soon you were tiptoeing out your front door, clutching a towel. Cove was already there to greet you. Your eyes met. Cove's gaze darted to your destination and back to you. You checked the door was closed, gave him a thumbs up, and the two of you le le leaped into action. Wordlessly, you began to run began to run down the familiar path ahead, Cove beside you. The thrill of your illicit outing made you want, want to laugh. Now that you dared, if anyone in your family looked out and saw you with saw you, then then your summer would be back in back to being over one i cannot fucking read anymore one glance at cove to you that he was excited ex sorry he was exactly the same holding back snickers for fear of being hurt and caught the towel streamed out from under your arm like a cape you were running so fast downhill that simply keeping your balance and not tumbling down was a real threat it just wasn't enough of one to make you slow your pace for every step you took the beach was a little closer and the day a little brighter what lay ahead of you would arrive and you were happy to meet it Oh, in between. What's in between, huh? So now we're getting into like uh, step three. Uh, hair color. Where's blonde? It's blonde yellow, technically. Oh, I want to go pink, but I have never gone pink hair yet, so I'm not gonna do that. No more glasses, fam. I look so cute, fam. Oh, a headscarf? I didn't know this was option. Uh, unless it was an option, I just didn't pay attention. Alright. I don't want to give myself acne in this fake world. <laughs> I do not have acne, alright? Okay. Done. Okay. Our comfort is high. Okay, okay. Okay, direct love. We, we directly love him now because we're now, what, in high school? I directly love you, Cove. Damn, okay? <laughs> Direct. It's been it's been a hot summer. But anyway, this is where we're gonna stop for today's episode though, because now we can uh, officially go into step three. I kind of want to change my hair. These bangs ain't that. Uh, whatever. I'll just give it. <laughs> it's not like we can see my character anyway. But wait, relax, love. Nervous, love. Direct, love. Well, we've been friends forever, right? And I goof around too fucking much. There, I have no filter. So, I <laughs> love to redirect. Anyway, thank you guys for watching today's episode. Stay beautiful, and I will see you guys in the next one.